Hey guys, and welcome back to another game making tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be creating our weapon system in our Super Great Box clone. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing to do is to create a new script, and we're going to call this SCR Web Init or Initialize. This script is going to be initializing and defining all of the properties, names, uh, different values that we're going to be, be placing in each of our uh, guns, and things like that. Now, we're going to close out of that for now, and this script is going to be run at the start of our game. So in the create event of our O control, we're going to say SCR web init. Now, I want to teach you guys a little quick tip here. Usually in games, we have multiple of rooms. Now, one of those rooms is usually called RM init. So at the moment, we only have one game room. Let's create a new one called RM init. Now in this room, I'm going to set the dimensions to the same. In here, we're going to be putting out all of our uh, variables and global variables that we are going to define. So let's place our O control right here. Now there's a problem here, all right? If I go into this object, after this room has finished, all right, in this room, it won't be present there anymore. It's going to be gone. So we're going to click on this persistent tab right here. And what this does is it makes it um, go to all of the rooms. Like it just makes sure that this object is present at, in all rooms. So let's click OK now. And don't worry about how this room looks because the player will not see this room at all. Because in the creation code, we're going to say room underscore go to next. So, alright, cool. So if we play the game now, nothing should change. It just makes things a little, oh, oops, there's one thing that I forgot to do. Drag that above arm one. So this room starts off first. Okay, guys, so now we've got that finished. Let's start editing our script. So I'll hop over to SDR Web Init. And this script is where we're going to be defining our weapons and the properties. So we're going to be using a two-dimensional array here. All right. So the first thing is we're going to define a global variable called weapons. And this is going to say basically how many weapons are there in your game. And we're just going to say three for now because we're, we have three sprites and today we're going to make three weapons. And the next line is going to say global.weapons minus equals one. The reason why, because arrays usually start off with one as zero. So two basically means three. If you're familiar with coding, you'll understand this. However, if you're not, just uh, play, wrong, uh, play around with it and you'll see how it works. The next thing we have to do is make an enum. Right. And let's call this enum weapons. So here we can, now this is not necessary. However, it's an option that's highly recommended as it makes things much clearer and easier to access. So we're going to have three weapons, the pistol, which we're going to put as zero, the machine gun, put as one, and the revolver as two. As I said earlier, you can see that the pistol always starts off as zero because that's just how computer works. computers work. Yeah. So what this does is that let's say you want to say the current weapon is equal to the pistol. However, you forgot the value, in this case, zero. So all we have to type is just say weapons dot pistol. And what's even greater about this is that it's global. So you can access this from anywhere in your game. Now, obviously this is un like unnecessary, but it's in my opinion, it's pretty, it's much more easier because it makes things much more easier. Cool. Let's, the next thing we have to do is start to create our two dimensional array. So at the start of this, we're going to create a comment that is telling us all of our properties. So global.webArray, this is going to be our, our array that we're going to be using to define our weapons. And the first parameter is basically what weapon. Okay, We're just going to say index for now. The second one is the property. In this case, it's the zero, which is the first one. And we're going to set that to name. 
going to copy this out for a little while. Once again, this, this does nothing. It's just telling us the different properties that's going to be present in this. One, two, three, four, five. So the second one's going to be called object name. The third one's going to be called fire rate. You can see where I'm going with this. The third one's going to be, the fourth one's going to be called bullet speed. And we can delete this last one because all we need now is damage. Obviously, you can add more subjects like knockback or, um, I don't know, spraying, as in like shotgun shells and stuff like that. But we're just going to use four for now, five for now, actually. So this is just guiding us, like letting us know which is which. Let's actually create it now. So the first weapon we're going to be creating is with a pistol. We're going to copy this. And paste that right here. Now set the index here to zero. Or if you really want, you can actually just say weapons dot pistol. Oops, because that's the exact same thing. And now these aren't values at all, so we just need to change this. The name. Pistol. Make sure you use quotation marks because, as a string, Game Maker needs that to recognize it. Object name. We don't have one right now, but we'll create one later. O pistol. The fire rate, um, six, six frames. The bullet speed, around 25. Obviously, this is optional. You don't have to have bullet speed in your game. The damage is one for now. Cool. So now let's copy all this. Two more times. So now we've got one, two, three. The second one's going to be called machine gun. Oops. Machine gun, I mean. And the index will make this machine gun. The name we'll call this obviously machine gun again. And the the objects, the fire rate. Now, obviously, machine guns are pretty fast. How they do sometimes less damage. So I'm gonna call this 1.5. Should I make it around three, three, yeah, three. Um, this faster speed, let's go around 35, and the damage around 0.5, or 0 0.8, 0 0.5, doesn't really matter. Obviously these need tweaking because obviously they're not balanced. The next one is going to be our revolver. This is going to be called revolver, A revolver. The pistol, uh, a revolver. Um, what's this? Number two is the fire rate. So now you can see, let's say you forgot what's this for. You can actually scroll up, look at the comment, and see which which number belongs to which property. So number two is, in fact, the fire rate. And for this, we're just going to say 3.5. What's this? Number three is the bullet speed. 28 and the damage will put as 2 <laughs> yeah or whatever they can change I guess so we've got all of our weapons defined as so let's quickly create all of these weapons let's create a new group here called weapons and O pistol with the sprite of this one Oh, what's that one called? Revolver? No, machine gun. Machine gun. Du duplicate that and call this O uh, revolver. Cool. Now there's one thing that I have to do, and that's in most games we have what we call parents and childrens. So these are these objects are all a type. They are all a type of weapon. So we can parent these or objects all to one parent that has the same sort of behavior. So let's call this O weapon par, which stands for parent. All right, we'll give that no sprite. And we're going to parent all of these objects to that specific one. This is really convenient because we can just change that one object and all of these will just change. But obviously each of them will have their own specific properties. This is very commonly used in 
all types of games, for example, enemies. If you have different types of enemies, you can have one parent enemy which takes all the damage and all the other ones will follow the behavior. So it's really convenient and it's good to get into practice as young developers. All right, guys, there's one thing I forgot to do and that's in the script. At the very bottom, we want to say global.current weapon is equal to weapons.pistol. This is just telling our game that the current weapon at this at the start of our game is going to be a pistol, which is our default weapon. Now, in the player event, in the creator event, at the bottom, we are going to create that weapon. So, we're going to say instance underscore create, and we're going to create this weapon at the X position of the player, the Y position of the player, and we're going to create the current weapon. So we can't just say global.currentWeapon because this is just going to return a, a number, an object is in a number. We're going to say global.weaparray, which is the weapon array that we're, we created recently. And the index, now this is going to be a number. And which one is it? It's global.currentWeapon. This is why we created that variable. The, and then the next value is the object, which is 1. If we look back in our script, number one is object's name. So that's going to create our weapon. Create weapon. And now let's start editing our behavior in our oweapon par object. So the first thing to do here in the create event, we're just going to say image underscore speed equal point 0.2. If your um, weapon is simply a stationary, no sub images object, then don't bother doing that. In the step event, the first one is going to be positioning slash scaling. So if instance exists, which is O player, then um, x, oops, what am I done? x equals O player dot x and y equals o player dot y. What's this for is basically this guy is going to create an, a, a, an object which is the gun and it's just going to follow the player around. Uh, let's do plus 5. This will depend on your gun. There's one thing that I want to show you. Let's make sure that the, the origin is kind of around there. Oops, what's this? It really depends on scaling. Just muck around with that. Okay. Next, if um, O player dot image x scale is equal to one, then um, then the weapon image x scale is equal to one as well. Else, image x scale equal to negative one. This is just saying if the object is facing right, then the the weapon is also going to face right. Else, it's going to face left. Cool. So let's play the game now and see if this works out well. Oh, one thing we need to do. You can see that we can't really see it because the depth isn't high enough. Make that a depth of 99. Uh, oops. Something wrong with that? Oh. Yeah. But I don't think the depth actually inherits. Which is slightly strange. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Make that all 99. And let's play the game now. Yeah, so you can see now it's in front. And when I move left and right, you can see it follows my player. However, when I pick up my box, nothing actually happens. So let's make that do something. And I can't shoot as well right now. It's kind of weird. So in our weapon power, the next one that we're going to be creating is the um, changing weapons. 
changing weapons. Now let's go into our player objects here. And in the create event, we created a variable called change web. Whenever I collide it with the crate, that'll change the truth. So what I'm going to do here is say if instance exists, our player. The reason why I do this is just to make just to avoid er errors because errors is the last thing that you want. And if o player dot change underscore web equals true, then then let's start m getting that new weapon. So I say generate a random web. So let's get a local variable called next web. And this is where we use our global dot weapons variable. So I want to set here for random I'm just gonna type the code out and I'll explain to you later. So, uh, weapons. Alright. So this is saying plus one. Hold up, yeah, plus one. So this is saying the next weapon is gonna be generating a random value from zero to global dot weapons, which is three. Which is two plus one, yep, three. And hold on, there's one thing that I'm kind of skeptical about. Okay, that's alright. Now let's do one thing that we did previously with our crate. And that's, let's say we have our current weapon, which is a pistol, right? And we pick up a crate. What if that, that weapon that I'm getting is a crate, is, is a pistol again? That, that's not something that happens in Super Crate Box. It's always random. So we're going to say while next web is equal to global dot current weapon so while the um the newly generated weapon is the same as our current weapon then we're going to take this and generate it again all right now um change to random weapon. okay so when you pick it up we're just gonna change our weapon to an, another one. So instance underscore change to global dot web array. Once again, we can't just state the val the, the number, the integer straight away. By the way, what for does is it makes it an integer. If we didn't have that, it'll always generate things in des decimals and that's just not what we want. So here we're gonna say next web and one which is the object property and true because we do want to perform actions afterwards now we're going to say a global dot current weapon is now equal to next web and o player dot change web equals false because we've changed the weapon we don't want this to loop over and over again and yeah i okay, that's it Let's take that. Let's see what else we need to do here. I think that's good. All right, let's play the game here and see how this runs. I'm not too sure. So if we pick the crate up, yeah, you can see here, look at this. We now have a machine gun. Pick it up again, I get a pistol. I get a machine gun, I get a pistol, machine gun, oh. Is that a mistake? Oh, there we go. Revolver. Pistol. Machine gun. Pistol. Machine gun. Pretty rare on the revolvers. What's that? There we go. One thing that I might need to do, and that's in the Empire. Make sure that at the start here, we have a randomize, just to make sure that these will always be different. Okay, cool. 